is not your normal day in London, guys. It's 17 September 2022. Two days before the funeral of Her Majesty the Queen, Elizabeth II. Just want to show you what the city here looks like. You've got arguably the postcard of England in front of us here. It's called the Elizabeth Tower. You might think, why is it not called Big Ben or why am I not referring to it as Big Ben? And that is because Big Ben is a very specific nickname for the great bell of a striking clock at the northern end of the Houses of Parliament. Now it's also used to refer to the tower itself. And as we walk down here in the Westminster area, you can see there are lots of people out here. The street, bizarrely, is empty. Clear of traffic, the odd bicycle here and there. Most people are actually taking pictures here on the uh, on the pavements of the River Thames and the London Eye over there. And we're actually here on Westminster Bridge, which you will see is a greenish color. It's the same color as the seats in the House of Commons. Whereas Lambeth Bridge over there, the most conspicuous color there is red, which is the color of the seats in the House of Lords. And here you can get a idea of the scale of it. It's 96 meters tall. It was designed by Augustus Pugin, completed in 1859 in a new Gothic style. And obviously there's the Houses of Parliament. And you can see more of the River Thames here. I would say 95% of all the people here are tourists. That would be my, my guess. There's certainly a lot of people. Maybe not as many as I expected, because I'd imagine most people would probably be in the Green Park area queuing to pay their final respects to Queen Elizabeth II. But nonetheless, Tourist money is still flowing into the capital, that's for sure. So, I mentioned it was completed in 1859. At the time of its completion, it was the largest and most accurate four-faced chiming clock in the world. I don't know what the most accurate one in the world is at the moment. If someone in the comments could let me know, that would be great. Traffic marshals. <laughs> Lots of police, bobbies around. I think it feels a lot more organized today, actually, than usual. Because of the events that have unfolded. So, yeah, even though there's a lot of people around, it feels very structured. Here we can get a, a good look at the London Eye. Cheat our way through here. And the River Thames, its usual sort of brownish colour. And here you can see Westminster Bridge. Yeah, just another shot here of Westminster Pier and the London Eye. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> lots of people with phones taking photos. Ask, ask, ask. 
It just absolutely still remains such a beautiful sight for me after all these years. I guess seeing Big Ben for the first time, or the Elizabeth Tower actually, the use of proper name. It's, it's one of those things that you knew where you were when you saw it the first time. And I was just on a random train in London or a overground in London. But it's quite spectacular to see it now. There was a lot of construction actually recently, uh, refurbishment that went on. So I've not actually seen it without the scaffolding, etc. For a, for a while. Absolutely beautiful. Lots of people out on the Thames itself. Here you can see the Houses of Parliament right next to the Elizabeth Tower, also known as Big Ben. Excuse me, sir. What would be the best way to walk to Green Park, frankly? Would it be through Temple, you reckon? Um, that could be quicker if I just... This road is all shut. Is it all shut? There's a protest Oh, there. okay, I see. Okay. So I'd avoid that way if I was you. Right. Um, Unfortunately, Unfortunately, it's going to be this way and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, thank you very much. Not your, not your ordinary day in London, no, is it? Yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Well, so lots of people around. Let's just let's just have a walk through London here, so you can get an idea of a number of people in the city. Like I said, there's there's a lot of people out. Maybe not as many as I thought and it does feel very organized actually so lots lots of crowds or a large crowd rather but it does seem fairly efficient here on this corner again can't get enough of Big Ben This is going to be a struggle getting through here. Oh, I think we've properly hit the traffic jam now. Here at Westminster Station. It's going to have to be patient. Oh, wait. Actually, no, I've changed my mind. It's a bad idea to go this way. I might just take the underground. Right, so... Can we go in the Go to embankment. Yeah, no, I think it's a good idea to skip those people, keep the crowds. Right, so my plan is to go one stop eastbound to embankment, where we will hopefully have less people. So Let's go check it out.
This is a district line train to Upminster. The next station is Embankment. We are here outside Embankment. And you can see considerably less people here than at Westminster. I think this road is actually closed to the public, so you have to take public transport to get here. And there's an iconic Red London phone booth. Give you an idea where we are, you're on the tube map, embankment over there. Westminster where we just were, with Big Ben. So you're from embankment, should be able to walk to Trafalgar Square. Let's see if we could, uh, we could do that. Right, it's, uh, it's just a short walk to Charing Cross from here and uh, wow this this is considerably less crowded than the Westminster area at Big Ben so yeah how funny when I first arrived there I thought wow this is actually not as busy as I thought but when I got to the uh, station entrance there at Westminster, it was absolute carnage. So, very glad that I took public transport now to get here and have a bit of green, fresh air as well, yeah, after all those crowds. And this is a very nice casual stroll here in Embankment. You can see lots of shops around selling snacks for tourists, hungry tourists and a few restaurants, you've got a ramen bar here it's Japanese ramen fried chicken and the Princess of Wales pub You can see some commemorative stuff for Queen Elizabeth II on sale here. T-shirts, flags. You, you said it. And uh, street musicians as well. The juxtaposition of that music compared to the noise of a crowd at Westminster. Here we are at Charing Cross Station. At the Charing Cross. So interestingly, all distances from London get measured from Charing Cross Station. So whenever you see a mileage sign somewhere in the country, here in the UK or in England, you know that it's measured from this very point here. Union Jacks at half mast, of course. Here's a London Red Bus, about to pass us. Well, quite a few actually over there. Black Cab of London. Of course with black cabs, I don't know if it's still the case, but I know that the exam that they had to pass to get their license or accreditation was extremely tough. You had to study the entire map of London and you have to know what the quickest way is between two points. So say between Leicester Square and I don't know for example Charing Cross, you need to know the exact the, the exact quickest road. Trafalgar Square, which will be our next stop. So Martin in the fields.
I don't know if there's a wedding on today or something. There it is, there's Nelson's column. So your Trafalgar Square looks close today. The Canadian Embassy just next year to Trafalgar Square. It is a bit of a strange atmosphere. So quite a few embassies in this part of town. I mentioned the Canadian one over there. You've also got the Uganda house here. And South Africa house not too far from here. Yeah, an empty Trafalgar Square. But there you see Admiral Nelson. Nelson's column. The column itself is 52 meters high. It was constructed between 1840 and 1843 for a cost of approximately 47,000 pounds, which uh, in today's money is about 5 million. So Nelson lost an eye in the Battle of Kelby 1794 and lost an arm in the Battle of Santa Cruz de Tenerife 1797. And I believe what happened was he was shot in the right elbow by a musket ball which shattered most of his humerus bone and he also died in the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805, 21st of October 1805. But obviously he was victorious in that battle. Commemorated here forever in Nelson's column. It's a column of the Corinthian order built from Dartmoor granite and you can also see here there are four lions at the base of a column added in 1867 and designed by Edwin Lancia. Edwin Lancia. More of a lion, one of the lions. Usually when it's open here, there's lots of kids, people around the lions taking pictures, close today. And some uh, information here of the area. And there you can see the National Gallery as well. There you can see another view of Big Ben. There's another view of a column from this side. That's not Nelson, but General Sir Henry Havelock. The French had also joined forces with the Spanish. So... I don't know if you can see the Golden Springbok over there on South Africa. This used to be where South Africa House was located. I think they've now moved office. In fact, I'm pretty sure they have because I renewed my passport in the new offices. But the Golden Springbok still on display there. A bit of South Africa here in London. And more of the red buses and the black cabs. Trafalgar Square bus, 29. Right, let's see if there's any way that we could get to Buckingham Palace. I suspect not, but let's let's at least give it a shot. Yeah, I think actually just getting to this roundabout will be will be a challenge. There's police everywhere, street marshals. 
and it's all barricaded off. Let's give it a shot. Maybe I can find a shortcut somewhere. Souvenirs and London -y stuff you can get here. All right. Lots of barricades here as well. Poppies. Right, so we've got some information here. Buckingham Palace in this direction. Trafalgar Square where we just were in that direction and Westminster with Big Ben over there look at all the Union Jacks here it's actually a magnificent sight and look at all the toilets all the bypasses in case they need it There's King George VI, the father of Queen Elizabeth II and Queen Elizabeth, so the Queen Mother over there as well. And here's a closer view. Coffee for those who uh, want to take a break from the crowds or a hot chocolate. Yeah, it's clear that autumn is here in London with all the leaves on the ground, trees losing their leaves. So there's no doubt winter's coming, but it's actually a really nice, warm-ish day for September at least. You can see lots of people wearing coats, but also the odd one wearing t-shirt or a long sleeve like I am. Right, now we're hitting a bit of a decision here. Go left, go right. So maybe I'm a quitter, but I think today Buckingham Palace is not going to be an option for us guys, unfortunately. I think I will absolutely come back to London to do more vlogs, that is the intention at least. And we can cover off Buckingham Palace then. But I think let me just rather show you other parts of the city, even though we haven't got to the palace itself, I hope. This gives you an idea of a number of people in the area today. When you walk around here, it doesn't feel that busy. But boy, oh boy, whenever there's a stop or a traffic light or a pedestrian point to cross, it gets very difficult. So I do have an all-day travel card, but why don't we walk up over here? Let's skip the public transport for now and let's just see a bit of London on foot maybe even get lost which is always a bonus in the Buckingham Palace area there's a Canadian delegate presumably lots of people on bikes enjoying the weather 
And yeah, away from all the crowds, it's just a normal day in London, a normal Saturday. In fact, I guess it would probably be even more quiet or more relaxed in other parts because everyone will be trying to pay respect to Queen Elizabeth II or just follow the crowds but over here there's still a lot of traffic marshals and barricades here but not nearly as much as in the uh, areas we just passed Charles II Street Theatre Royal Haymarket Yeah, let's take a chance here yeah. Here are some of the newer red London buses, the Boris buses Which I don't think I've been on, frankly I always take the tube or the underground. If you've been on these red Boris buses, electric cleaner air for London, let me know. I don't know how widespread they are. Are they actually the status quo at the moment? Shows you I've not been to London for quite a while actually. So do let me know in the comments. Maybe I'm just a stupid tourist. And so here we are at the West End here in London. Again, the usual sign, you are here. Five minutes walk in this direction. Beautiful buildings here, isn't it? London flexing its architectural muscle. And here's a Theatre Royal Haymarket, which we saw from across the road earlier. And if we walk up here, we'll get to Soho and maybe Fair Piccadilly Circus in due course. We have some off license and candy shops here. The rent must be extortionate in this part of town. Angus Steakhouse. Hard Rock Cafe, a bit of America here in London. Next to the iconic London phone booths, UK phone booths. Made it to Piccadilly Circus. The famous advertising board there. Information here, yeah, Piccadilly Circus. We are here, that is Eros. The statue there and the underground station here. Lily White's a famous sports store and the statue of Eros and the famous advertisement or advertisement board. Celebrating the art of London, brighter future. Yes, so lots of people here, but more people today at Big Ben and at Buckingham Palace. No doubt about that. the London city centre is not that big of a deal to walk you can see there at the back that's the Houses of Parliament not far at all here from Piccadilly Circus right 
let's go on another underground adventure see where we can get to so we can take one of two subway lines here Bakerloo or Piccadilly so Piccadilly Circus one stop to Oxford Circus or on the Piccadilly line you can go to Leicester Square I reckon let's go to Oxford Circus and show you some of the heartland of London's shopping district exit 7 for Oxford Street up here one of the main shopping streets here in London if not the world almost certainly the world sweet touch for some treats and yes so lots of big department stores and shops around here you can see we are here and this is all of Oxford Street and most if not all of these people are on a shopping spree of some sort except us we are just people watching and experiencing London if you like shopping Oxford Street is a place to be I'm planning to come back here at Christmas time to see all the Christmas markets in London and I will visit Oxford Street again or I plan to at least so watch out for those vlogs and away from all the clove shops high street shops you also got some interesting bespoke ones or ad hoc ones American candy shop over there that looks interesting let's go check it out all this American candy that you can get some of them I'm familiar with like Haribo but uh, Teddy Graham's I've never heard of cheese and grooves <laughs> maybe if you're from America you're laughing now but I've never heard of it never heard of Apple Jacks Fruit Loops I know yeah very interesting shop classic black gourmet licorice I do like licorice but today's maybe not the day for it and yeah back on Oxford Street American candy shop wagon over here with all the treats your heart desire more souvenirs Rest in peace, Queen Elizabeth II. One pound souvenirs. Platinum Jubilee t-shirt still on sale as well. Here's a falafel street food stand. Evidence that we are in Oxford Street. There's global gifts. So if a UK souvenir is not enough for you and you want a global gift, that's where you go. I actually don't think I've ever seen Oxford Street so quiet on a Saturday. There's, uh, there's definitely a weird vibe in the city or a strange vibe. Of course it's Halloween soon so you can get your spooky Halloween stuff here in Oxford Street or if global gifts are not enough for you you want unique gifts you come to Oxford Street and now we're on Regent Street adjacent here to Oxford Street also famous shopping street <laughs> oh, 
And I think if we cross into Little Argyll Street there, we will get to Carnaby Street. And here's the Palladium. Final performances must end 17 September, which is today, so I'm too late for Beauty and the Beast. But we're not too late for more adventures here in London. Wow, what a beautiful Tudor style building in front here. Liberty. It's uh, pretty conspicuous. Tribute to Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II. And there's another Tudor style building here. Various restaurants. I particularly like this one by the look of it. Take me away. Starbucks. House in the bottom of the old Tudor style building. You've got the Imagine sculpture. John Lennon. And there's the entrance to Carnaby Street. Here in London. Let's check it out. <laughs> so Carnaby's got their own style of information board. You are here. Little uh, flashing red light. And there's a glittering Union Jack with Carnaby and a crown. The top looks amazing. Wow, that does actually look quite spectacular in the sun. The Carnaby sign. Benefit. Laughter is the best cosmetic. And uh, some hanging lights. I bet they look pretty good at night. Maybe we can come and check them out in the winter vlog. And some more glitter here, two faced. Scotch and soda. in the time. Shoe shops. And look at the mural here, wow. The parish of St. Anne's, I think. Soho. RS number nine with a famous red tongue. Rolling Stone shop. It's quite uh, distinct. X Paris, Carnaby Street. Everyone who's a lardy da or fashion comes here. Right, what is through here? Kingly Court. Seating area with some shops. Korean food, rum kitchen. You know, this area is far too posh for me. I'm just a boy from Lambert Space, South Africa. Let's get out of here. Right, so let's get back to Oxford Circus Tube Station. Let's jump on the Victoria Line. I'll take you right to the end, to Walthamstow, and you'll see why when we get there. It's my bolter of the day. In Walthamstow, there are lots of nice street markets. Let's go. So we are here at Oxford Circus, and we're going to Walthamstow Central. Stone. Let's check out this part of London at the end of the Victoria Line. It's actually getting a bit chilly again. So just need to put on my warm jacket and then we'll explore these wonderful markets. Right, all set now. 
fruit sellers. See boxes of fruit that will probably go on sale. Great, and wow, this is interesting. Some large roast ribs. Oops, sorry. sorry, man. 15 pounds, that's actually a good price. Hello, sir. Cash only. More fruit. Yeah, so we're world away from central London. But it's nice just to come here and do a bit of shopping and explore the markets. Lots of colorful clothes and garments around. Clearance sales. You see, we moved on from the fruit to the uh, shoes and footwear. And there's fish markets here as well. Afro Caribbean Asian foods. So, quite a variety of stuff. More fruit at the back. Potatoes here, cloves, Queen Elizabeth memorabilia here, and Eastern European foods here. So, if you're from Romania or Lithuania, you might recognize some of these snacks here. These are large contingent of Eastern Europeans in this part of London so that makes sense that those shops are here in this part of town see more clothes all different kinds of things for sale kitchen paper pots and pans cozy home bargains hardware CK pots and pans Clothes here. Three pound each, two for five. Yeah, so what do you think of Walthamstow? Leave a comment in the comment section. But it's my tip for the day to come down here, escape central London and experience something different. African fabrics. So Walthamstow is a good example of London as a cosmopolitan city, a cultural hotpot. And what a wonderful world. Watches and sunglasses, a more Romanian things for sale here, yeah, food and snacks. Cosmetics, nail polish, belts. Similar, but ladies are Which one is the Your local Oriental supermarket and cafe. Polski, the sklep. So for Polish food. You can see Ambrosia, specialist in Afro-Caribbean and Asian foods. African, Asian, European fabrics as well. Scotch beef, English lamb, some leggings, bag shops, nails and beauty. All kinds of fabrics and linen, more jackets, sunglasses and hubblies, Angry Birds backpacks, incense sticks and cones, and light musk, lavender. There's even some Austrian hairdressers here, Mozart. Lithuanian foods. So at this shop here, you get the flags of the UK, Latvia, Ukraine, Romania, Estonia, and Lithuania. Brilliant. Prizreni, is that from Kosovo? And some biryani here, a true taste of Pakistan. Afghan and Middle East cuisine. 
more fabrics, clothes, jewelry. Wow, just look at all the different colors here of clothes. And this is the street cafe area here in Walthamstow. Lots of different shops, places to eat. Authentic Turkish barbers as well. Here in Beauty Salon. And that's a very interesting mural over there. And I think guys, this is where I'll end my video actually. I hope you enjoyed this tour of London. Obviously a sad weekend with the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II in two days, but I hope not only did this show you what the city looked like on this weekend but also showed you other parts of London that you wouldn't all normally see but for now thanks for watching my videos hit that subscribe button and I'll speak to you soon